The Law of Slanesh is a pretty varied one as far as laws go. You have a number of powerful damaging spells as well as buffs and debuffs to turn the tide of battle into your favour. This results in a law that seems to have a spell for any occasion without specialising too deeply one way or the other. For the most part this Jack of All Trades Master of None format works quite well and the law feels great to use alongside the Slanesh battle playstyle. And of course only factions that can use this law are Slanesh and the Demons of Chaos. Our first spell is Blissful Rapture and this is of course the passive of the law. It targets allied units map wide and grants them 12 melee attack and 4 leadership for 10 seconds whenever the Slanesh caster casts a spell. As usual you can't go too far wrong with a passive since it's just free extra value alongside whatever spell you're actually casting. The effects here are pretty nice even if they're only active for a short time. That added melee attack will increase the damage output of your unit significantly and will only get you more value the later game units you have with you. The leadership isn't really going to change anything but if it came down to it, it could save some units from disintegrating quite so quickly. To get the most out of it you want to cast your spells as your lines clash with the enemy to get the most possible extra damage on the enemy units. Other than that you don't really need to worry about anything else so once you're in the heat of battle, cast whenever you have a good opportunity. Our first castable spell is Lash of Slanesh. This is a breath spell, costs 6 winds of magic and has a 30 second cooldown. It can all be targeted on the ground and has a 100 meter cast range. It deals a small amount of magical armor piercing damage in an expanding tear shape. This is of course best used versus large clumps of enemy units to ensure you hit as many entities as possible and all the damage from the spell is going to be felt by all the enemies. The armor piercing damage may not be the most major in the world but for such cheap casts it's pretty decent and can add up to a ton of value if you spam this cheap spell a bunch of times into clusters of enemy units. You're not going to one shot anything with even medium armor but you'll still do some meaningful damage and that's exactly who you want to target. So wait for a clump of enemy units with around 40 armor and cast to your heart's content until they start to fall and break. The overcast increases the cost to 9 winds of magic and doubles the damage. Pretty much the same usage as the base cast but now you can choose to do great damage to medium armor units or some okay damage to the most armored units. Either way you're going to get a ton of value for not a lot of winds and punch through enemy armor no matter how thick. It may take quite a few casts to take out enemy units completely but the cost is still pretty low so it's hardly a big deal. The only time you should go with the base cast over the overcast is if your caster is very low on HP or winds of magic. Otherwise you should go for that extra damage every single time. Next up we have Acquiescence, this is a hex spell, costs 6 winds of magic and has a 29 second cooldown. It can only be targeted on enemy units and has a 200 meters cast range. The affected enemy unit suffers minus 24 melee defense and minus 25% speed for 25 seconds. This spell is of course best used versus enemy front lines units to dramatically reduce their defense and allow your troops to deal much more damage for a short time. It also comes with the added bonus that the units will be much slower if they try to retreat, meaning you will have an even easier time chasing them down and wiping the units out for good. You could also use this on enemy cav to make them easier to pin down and take out. And while you will be getting more value out of that speed reduction, unless you've got some pretty speedy units, you still might struggle to catch up to them if they're pretty far away. I would stick to the front lines if I were you and focus on the highest defense on the enemy lines and take them out much quicker than you would otherwise. The overcast increases the cost to 8 winds of magic and increases the speed reduction to minus 45%. If you stick into front lines infantry units then don't bother using this overcast since that increase to the speed debuff isn't really going to do much more for you. However that cav that we talked about earlier are now a much better target since they will be massively slowed and give your units plenty of time to catch up to them and take them down before the spell wears off, even if they're trying to run. I would say to only use this overcast if you're going to be targeting cav or any other fast units, otherwise you're simply not going to get much more value out of it over the base cast for the extra cost and risk of damage. Hysterical Frenzy is next, this is an augment spell, costs 8 winds of magic and has a 43 second cooldown. It can only be targeted on allied units and has a 200 meters cast range. The affected unit gains 25% armor piercing weapon damage, 40 melee attack, but can unfortunately go on a rampage if their health drops low enough. And all these effects last for 40 seconds. You want to of course use this on the highest damage units you have on your lines, but there is a bit of a catch there, the rampage. This means that once you cast this spell, whatever unit you choose will charge headlong at the nearest enemy unit upon taking a large amount of damage and ignore all orders until the spell wears off. So you want to make sure you send your guys in and have them attacking the unit you want to attack before casting to make sure they stay on target and all that increased damage is going to be where it needs to be. So choose them a tag that is high HP and isn't going to die in the first 10 seconds of the cast so they stay in one place and don't push themselves far too deep into the enemy lines and get themselves killed. You also want to make sure you protect the unit from other units like missiles and monsters as you cannot move them away from danger if they go on a rampage so we'll have to settle for moving danger away from them. 
And also, if you keep them healthy, they won't go on a rampage to begin with, so that's a very nice touch there. As long as you do all this to keep them safe, you should get some excellent damage, especially on high tier units. The overcast increases the cost to 12 winds of magic and increases the bonus armor piercing damage to 50%. This just further improves the damage increase from this spell, but aside from that, it doesn't really change anything. You still want to use this on your highest damage output units and send them for the toughest units on the enemy side to make the most of that percentage based increase. You still need to make sure they stay safe, and the only reason you shouldn't use this overcast is if you're low on winds or HP on your caster, otherwise you can't go wrong with even more damage. A Vein of Slanesh is a direct damage spell. It costs 10 winds of magic and has a 38 second cooldown. It can only be targeted on enemy units and has a 100 meter cast range. It deals 63 to 125 damage per second for 15 seconds and the affected unit can go on a rampage if they take enough damage. So this is a bit of a weird direct damage spell, as normally they are best used on single entity units, but the tooltip here says it's best used versus 25 men or more. And strangely enough, for some reason, when you use this spell on multiple entities, you get the damage stated and they take a large amount of HP. However, when using this on a single entity, the damage is pathetic and I'm really not sure why, but I do know that you should for sure use this on multiple entity units to get the most value there. They will take some great damage and if you combine this with some more damage like front lines or a cav charge or missiles, you'll be able to trigger that rampage and have them follow you into the middle of your army where there will be no escape once the spell and the rampage wear off. So cast, focus them with damage, then kite them into danger and you can't go wrong. The overcast costs 19 winds of magic and doubles the duration. This of course doubles the max potential damage from 1875 to 3750 and you still want to use this on multiple entities since the damage still for some reason doesn't touch single entities. It still does great damage to multiples and the increased duration also means a longer time for that unit to go on a rampage provided they take enough damage quickly enough. I would go for this overcast when tagged in a high HP unit to take as much of their health away from them in as short a time as possible and to attack them with other units to trigger that rampage and use it to your advantage. If you do all of that, you'll get some very, very good value. Slicing Shards is next up, it's a bombardment spell, costs 12 winds of magic and has a 48 second cooldown. It can only be targeted on the ground and has a 200m cast range. It deals projectile and explosion damage in a large strike area. This is best used versus large clumps of enemy units to ensure you hit the most entities possible and all of that damage is going into enemies rather than the ground. Both the projectiles and the explosions do damage, so if you target it right, you can obliterate entire units in a single cast. This damage is also completely armor piercing, so elite enemy units are going to feel the damage just as bad as less armored foes. So you want to blob up elite enemy units as much as you can and target the center mass to hit as many of them as possible, whilst keeping your units as safe from the blast zone as possible. Make sure the enemy doesn't run away while the spell is casting, or even worse, kite your units into the target area, and you should be fine and get some great damage in there. The overcast increases the cost to 18 winds of magic and increases the damage of the projectiles and explosions by 50% each. So it's pretty much the exact same spell, but now each explosion and projectile does more damage, meaning you'll still be hitting the same number of enemies, which means you want to save this expensive cast for large groups of elite enemies that are at a high level of HP. Otherwise, the extra damage is going to waste on units that would otherwise die to the base cast. I would open up with the overcast if possible and then sprinkle in the base cast later when most of the units on the field have taken some hits. And our final spell is Phantasmagoria. This is a hex spell, costs 14 winds of magic, and has a 54 second cooldown. It can be targeted on enemy units on the ground, and has a 100 meter cast range. Units inside the 35 meter area of effect suffer minus 16 leadership and cannot move for the entire 11 second duration. Now the leadership part of this spell is honestly pretty disappointing since it's not that big a change and doesn't last for the longest time, so most enemies aren't going to break from this alone without some serious help from other factors. Thankfully, preventing enemy units from moving for this long does set you up for some devastating damage, especially with the cav roster Slanesh is so well known for. You are free to charge the backs of enemy units, and they can just sit there and wait for you to hit them. As long as you hit them with something good, like some Seeker Chariots or better, you should get some great damage in and break them in no time, even without the minus 16 leadership debuff. This is great for targeting on pretty much anything on the enemy side that you want to take out, since preventing movement is a death sentence for pretty much anything, as long as you can charge, surround, or shoot it. The overcast increases the cost to 22 winds of magic and doubles the duration. No change to the leadership, so you'll still need to do most of the heavy lifting to break your targets with other units. But that double duration of keeping the enemy still means you can obliterate whatever you hit with cav charges, missiles, or anything else you can throw at them. And they cannot even try to escape until it is far too late. I would say to use the overcast when you have super tough enemy units that you need taken out and will not be able to finish the job in 11 seconds or less. Other than that, the base cast is more than enough to send most hostiles packing. And that concludes this guide on the law of Slanesh. Let me know what you think of the law in the comments below. Let me know if you thought this video by leaving it a like or a dislike. And if you want to see more content like this, then be sure to subscribe to the channel so you never miss a video. I'd like to take this time to thank all supporters of the channel, like Henry Tucker, Fizz Pot, and that officer's tier.
If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so here on YouTube memberships, over on Twitch, and of course on Patreon. You get shout outs at the end of videos, just like all these wonderful people. I've reworked the support system recently to bring you even more value, so I'd really appreciate it if you check it out. Huge thanks to all supporters, one final thank you for watching, and for now, I've been Colonel Dumbers, and I will see you next turn.